Hello one and all and welcome to another episode of From the Cinema. I am your host Josh Rioff and today we are taking a look at one of the most surprising biggest hits of the year, Aladdin, the remake, because we are overlords to Disney. Oh wait, they're overlords to us and we are just the pawns that will see anything they give us even if it's the exact same thing as last time. Now, why am I talking to you about this today? Well, as I've said before, it is one of the biggest films of 2019 because why not? Um, and this is basically the exact same film as the 1992 animated version starring Robin Williams about a, about a, a person from Agrabah, uh, a, a country in India, um, who falls in love with a princess and finds a genie in a bottle that uses said genie to become a prince himself, uh, runs into like, you know, evil overlords and things like that, you know, must fight for the uh, hand of the princess. And yeah, basically the exact same thing as last time, but we have Will Smith who's blue like a smurf, so I mean, I guess that's different. Now, when it comes to doing these Disney live action remakes, Disney has had the approach of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but at the same time, fix it. I know that doesn't make sense, but the films themselves don't make sense. Most of them have been on this track of doing the exact same thing with these minimal differences that seem like it's enough to make a difference, but it's very clearly not enough to make a difference. I'm on the philosophy that to make a good remake of a movie, the film has to do enough to make it stand out on its own so that way people can see the difference between the two films, but also be remain faithful enough to the original film so that way it can be considered a remake. I consider the Karate Kid remake from, two, from 2010 to be one of the best uh, remakes of a film because it does enough to make it stand out on its own, but it remains faithful to the original story so that way it can be considered a remake. The remakes Disney has been making, on the other hand, are not. They are basically $200 million budgeted versions of the animated versions just with poor acting and somehow worse effects that are somehow longer but are also the same length. The, these math equations that I have just listed make no sense to me but they make sense to some people because like it made over a billion dollars this year because I don't know I have no answers. But let's get into the story of the film. As I said before, it's essentially the exact same thing as the original with minimal differences. So if you love that story, you'll most likely love this unless you want to see like enough differences. And at times there are, um, there's talks of like, you know, the country that Jasmine's mother came from and like, you know, potentially maybe starting a war with said country because of Jafar, which is interesting in and of itself, but it's never explored enough, which is kind of a problem. And then there's a subplot where Will Smith, um, as a genie, falls in love with Jasmine's handmaiden. It's really funny and kind of adorable and was one of the better things that this film added. But as a whole, the story didn't do enough to make it like stand out on its own or even make it its own version of it. It just it felt like it was too scared to do anything different and like, you know, make fans very angry. So it just wanted to do the same thing, which is a problem. Now for the acting. Um this is, it's interesting, and by interesting, I mean it's both good and bad. Uh, Mina Masad, who plays Aladdin in this, he sounds and looks very much like Aladdin, but in terms of his performance, I don't know if it was bad direction, or if it's just himself as an actor, I haven't seen him in anything else before, but it's very much awkward. Like, his de his delivery for certain parts works, and then it doesn't work for others, especially in the musical moments. I don't know what it is, but to me personally, I found it to be awkward and would always take me out of the moment just by his delivery of some stuff. It could be him as an actor. It could be his direction. I honestly don't have an explanation. But, yeah, he was at best fine as Aladdin. Now, on the other hand, Jasmine, who is played by Naomi Scott, was fantastic they gave her character enough to make her stand out on on her own and also naomi scott's performance was fantastic and the song that they added for her was just beautiful and naomi's performance throughout the whole thing uh just made it its own it stood out to me it was one of the best things of the film and made it easily one of the best things to make it watchable and honestly i preferred this version of jasmine over the original just because of how much more involved she is with the story and how much more they gave her to do as well now the biggest question that everyone had on their minds before they saw this film was Will Smith as a genie. Now, obviously, because of Robin Williams passing in 2015, it seemed insane to do a remake of Aladdin without Robin Williams. But this is Disney, so they did it anyways, and they found 
I would probably say the only real candidate that could do a genie performance without like, you know, making people mad, um, and that is Will Smith. And the reason I say that is because he is a person that has his own personality and charm that is unlike any that is unlike anyone else, that it could make it stand out on its own. And thankfully it does here. There are only very few moments where his like improv humor or just the written humor is a little bit awkward and doesn't work, but as a whole, his performance was the best thing of the film it easily saves the film once he comes in about like the 30 to 40 minute mark and just makes the film so much more enjoyable and so much more watchable just because he's in the film i will say though his animation is how should i say this a smurf mixed with will smith mixed with arnold schwarzenegger deciding to combine all those into one and it's odd to say to say the least and that's all i'm really gonna say on that because i don't know how else to put it besides that analogy but as a whole i love will smith in the film and i think he was easily the best part of the film and like i said the first 30 to 40 minutes before he shows up it is it is hard to get through it is not that great and then we have jafar um he was miscast is the best way I am going to describe this. I'm not saying because of his age, I'm saying because of his performance. It seemed like he was totally off in his own world, in his own different thing, doing his own thing, and it's it's interesting. And giving him Power Ranger armor was not did not help the case at all. Um, yeah, I don't like him. <laughs> um, he definitely could have been much more of an intimidating villain and a better villain, and but it was not that. And that's probably the best I could say in terms of his acting, because I don't want to be too harsh on a person that I don't know. But yeah, it was not that good. <laughs> now, because this is one of the, uh, the biggest musicals to come out in a long time, it stands to reason that, you know, it should be a good musical. And it both is and it also isn't. When it's like just focused on Aladdin or Jasmine, um, it's very, it feels like it's constraining itself. Like it just wants to just stand and sing and maybe walk around rather than, you know, big, a big elaborate musical number. Now, Rocket Man, which came out this exact same year, was a story about Elton was a story about Elton John. Um, so it made sense to be like, you know, creative, fantastical, like when it came to the musical numbers. But this is also a fantasy with a genie and stuff like that. And in Genie's number, it is very fantastical, like big, elaborate and crazy. And that's what I expected from all the numbers. But that was the only one that was actually like good and stood out. All the other ones were either standing and singing or weird fast paced walking and singing. Literally in the opening musical number, there's a moment where it goes into slow motion, but they're singing at the normal rate and then walking at a fast motion and singing at a normal rate. I don't know what that effect was for, but it was really awkward and very off-putting. And in terms of like musicals that have come out recently, this is definitely one of the lower ones just because of the way that it takes the approach to the musical numbers. This film was directed by Guy Ritchie, who is best known for making uh, British action films like Longstock um, and Two Smoking Barrels um, and the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movies. So his background for making musicals is slim to none. Um, and it's very apparent that it just, he didn't really have an overall vision for how to make these musical numbers very entertaining. Uh, the only one that ever was, as I said, was uh, Genie's musical number. And every other one is just fine at best. But he, I feel like that he was the wrong director to take on this project. He just didn't seem to have like the real passion or the real creative vision to make it his own or to make it stand out and like if you see any of his films he has a very clear and distinct vision for how his film should be especially in the Sherlock Holmes movies but here it just felt like he was very constrained and like didn't really feel like that he belonged and yeah it's I would say misdirection overall the Aladdin remake is above average is the best way that I can say this everything from the acting to uh, the effects to the story to the slim change to the slim changes that they made it just feels like an average job that they did like they were too scared to do anything new but because of Naomi Scott and Will Smith it just gives it that little nudge to make it slightly above average and makes it fun and enjoyable to watch but I would 
really not recommend it unless uh, you are a diehard Aladdin fan or you are a diehard Will Smith fan. Um, if you're just a casual Disney fan, you might find it okay. But honestly, I would say go watch the original one, skip this one. It's, it's better for all of us. I'm going to give the Aladdin remake a 6 out of 10. It's fine, but honestly, I don't really want to see it again. I've already seen it three times, which is three times too many for me. And, eh. All right, so that was my review of the Aladdin remake. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure that you uh, subscribe and make sure that you follow uh, me and Mason Cable Network on all of our social medias. And I will see you in the next episode. All right, peace out.